everyone. My name is Tranati Udpa. Geeta Prata and Vishaka are my teammates. So this year's topic is stargazing in Sultan Panya. What is stargazing? The word itself gives you the meaning. Gazing or looking at the stars. This is a practice of amateur astronomy where people who don't really have a goal of scientific research look at the stars with their naked eye or with a pair of binoculars. So, why did we choose this topic? As we all know, due to development in technology, the towns have been renamed as cities and now it is being renamed as smart cities. So, smart cities are using uh, technology in every field. But in the midst of all of these developments, the topic or the field of stargazing has gone missing. In our presentation, we want to prove that stargazing is also an important field where they should also give importance to it. Uh, people who are uh, thinking of building smart cities, they should give a lot of importance to stargazing also. How is this related to geography? Many of you here might think lifting your head up here and looking at the stars is the same as lifting your head up in America. But I want to tell you that there is a lot of difference. Uh, if I had to tell you in points, it would be revolution, rotation, tilt, weather, climate, and the location of the place, such as is it located in northern, southern, western or eastern hemisphere, you might not see the same stars everywhere. And that is for sure. Importance of stargazing. So, what is the importance of stargazing? If I have to tell you, it will be, uh, before our ancestors used to think that stargazing is a method of scientific research, as I told. But now, you can take it as two options. One. You can learn boring subjects such as physics, geometry, maths, geography, and uh, other subjects that you find boring in your class. You can learn it in an exciting way with the help of stargazing. Or you can take it as a relaxation or stress outlet, especially for city dwellers. I want to tell you about an experience I had in Kalasa. Kalasa is a place in Karnataka situated in Chikmagaluru district. In close proximity to Shringeri and Horanadu, lying on the river banks of River Bhadra. So we, our family visited there uh, as a year and trip to a homestay seven kilometers away from the main town. So you might have, uh, you might have uh, imagined how the place would be like. Now I will tell you that I was surrounded by western guards, everywhere trees, all nature, everything was amazing. But the night view, I want to tell you, that it was, uh, it was like this. And this is what I saw. Uh, here, because of the light around, you might not see the stars there, but I could see the Milky Way band, if that can give you a proper imagination. And the ambience that I had, I was in a hilltop on a cliff. I was sitting on a swing, and I was swinging around, and was, the wind was speaking to me. It was really amazing. And there were no street lights, there were no lights, and there were no horns, there were no cars, there was nothing. I was surrounded by nature and unfortunately insects. Uh, and my neck started to hurt. So I looked down and I saw that one tree was shaped like a dinosaur and another like a hand. So it really boggled my mind that how it improved my imagination. Then I used uh, a binocular, a pair of binoculars to look at the star series, the brightest star in our night sky. I realized that it's not alone. It has a companion beside it. So like Sirius, there are many stars where they are not alone and they have a best friend or another star next to it. To our naked eye, it might look like one star or one planet, but it actually has another planet or another star next to it. So because of all of this usage of equipment, I realized that Kalasa was the best experience I had. Let us all come back to reality here. Uh, I live in Sultan Palya in the city, so every weekly I go on top and I look at orange sky. You might not see it here, but I, I hope you have the experience that when you go on top and see the orange sky with no stars, if it's a good day, you might see one planet or seven stars. Something like that. It's like, oh, I saw seven stars. It's like that. So, this is what I see every day. And uh, after that, I get a terrace. I, I'm on a one-story building, so I don't have that much of altitude where I can stand on top and watch. So, it's not, it's not amazing in my home at least. And the ambience, it's a, it's a big contrast between Kalasa and here. Here there are tall, bright street lights, blaring horns, 
and people talking and shouting around my neighbors i don't know how they have such a bold voice but i can hear their voice so there is no point of using uh, binoculars also because all i can see is my neighbors washing their dishes or fighting or something like that no point no so there are also tall buildings around me as i told so one story building so there are apartments around my building that i will not be able to see anything except the apartments so you might have observed that i showed the differences between these two experiences i would like to tell you there are four major uh, differences one atmospheric distortion atmospheric distortion is a phenomena where the light from the stars enters our atmosphere and changes its direction a few times before reaching the onlooker so it will look like this and if we imagine our atmosphere to be made up of layers where the density decreases as we go higher just like pressure the amount of distortion increases as the light comes down so if i look at a star from here there will have lot of distortion taking place where if i go to a 10 story 20 story building the amount of distortion is very less uh so that is one of the reason if you ask me how an atmospheric distortion looks like you would have seen sunsets many of you might here have seen sunsets i'm sure you would have observed the color and the size changes and if you pay close attention to edge of the sun you might see it's also dancing that is atmospheric distortion the light of the sun is passing through the densest densest part of the atmosphere so the distortion is you know very huge amount another example you might have seen the jalebi seller at your street end. so if you bend down and look at the same level as the flame you might see he is also dancing but if you stand on your tippy toes and look at him he is not dancing anymore that is an example of the layers so the clarity of the star improves if distortion is less light pollution your eyes are more sensitive to bright lights and it takes a little bit time to adjust to the change of bright So, if I have to give an example of sensitivity to bright lights, easiest example, lighthouse. But if I have to give you an example of the change in brightness, you will be sleeping with your uh, heads covered, and your mom comes and opens the curtain. You squint and you scold her to close the curtain or off the lights or anything like that. That is an example. So, the dim light of the stars is disrupted by these bright street lights, headlights, and this, uh, this lights from the buildings. so you'll not be able to see the light of those dim stars that are so far away from us if you are surrounded by all of these lights and the next factor sky glow sky glow is an after effect of light pollution where the light produced is absorbed by the atmosphere so here uh, other pollution i can give an example of air pollution the easiest example so it causes smog it causes density it causes atmospheric uh, distortion it's a chain basically so all of that and the next factor is uh, i can give you weather climate and my psychological or uh, uh, the mindset that i have the day if i have the interest to watch i will try my best to watch it but if i don't what is the point so these are the major differences that i could spot here we connected to survey in our school and uh, nag area to see how many people were actually aware of the term star gazing i'm happy to tell you that 87% of them knew the term star gazing and its meaning but the 30% of them who did not know i would like to give them the benefit of the doubt saying that if they they knew the term but they knew the meaning of the term but they could not connect it or associate it with the word star gazing so i helped them and i told them that they can visit the planetarium they, they can experience a, a true star gazing uh, and they definitely cooperated well so uh, the number of people we surveyed was 73 and we asked them another question especially the 87% of them we asked them why do they like star gazing they said it is a relaxation outlet it is a relaxation outlet 60% of them said it's relaxation up 23% of them says they it will help them realize wow the universe is so beautiful and realization people realize that uh, there is a speck in the universe or some great stuff like that and this answer i really found it's very uh, unique that a person told they play a game with their family 
wherever they are stargazing, they collect the stars and form new constellations and name them. I want to be a part of the family actually. So, what did we do after getting or collecting all of these data? We conducted an experiment where you could see here the street lights is a majority of uh, causing light pollution. So, if we imagine that light bulb to be the street light and the black box, the under part of the box to be the road, you might see that the light is going everywhere, even above the uh, street light, and there is a very, very less amount of light reflected on the street uh, on the road. The objective of street lights is to light up the road, but it's not happening there. There, you might see that there is still light to the next part behind, but a little bit more amount of light on the road. Still not optimal. Here, you might see there's a gra uh, very drastic change. But there is still amount of light reaching to the sides, not optimal. Here, this I feel is the best for stargazing, as the light is only here, on this part of the box, and this is the road that we imagine. So this is the best part of this design, reflector design, for stargazing. Now, what did we actually do? We wanted to reduce sky glow, and we added a reflector that will fully cover the street light so that the amount of light reaching the atmosphere very less. So that will be the effect. Now I want to show you the proper way of what I tried to show you in all my pictures. You might have seen that is the first picture where no, no, none of the light is reaching the road. Here a little amount but not, not for stargazing because there is still light reaching the atmosphere. Here why do you need lights to the side there? No reason. But this is the best as it uh, gives safety and everything else. So that is what I think. Now, after collecting all of this, uh, we spoke to the BBMP official about this. We wrote a letter and we requested them and we questioned them. Why isn't all the street lights in the same design? Why is not all the street lights in a not cut off design? They gave another, uh, they gave a very good reason. They mentioned the word luxus. So luxus is that the government gives the limit of how much light should be reflected over an area and how much uh, brightness it should have. It differs from the traffic on that uh, area. So it will be different for national highways, it will be different for uh, cities, uh, highways and city st uh, streets. So all of it will differ. So they could not do it for our, because, uh, our street because it's a very busy street. So we requested them uh, to change it to full cutoff as much as we can and we, they said they will work on it. And I, I want to give you another idea that we can reduce the uh, street lights height, the pole's height, that the light is only on uh, the road and not reflecting over the higher atmosphere. But we can't really use it for India as the civic sense is not, not found here because here you might see, you might observe that, that even the street lights there is short there, near that, the street lights are short and we want it in that height if you want to reduce sky glow. But you can't use it in India as people might break, take the flight bus under. I don't know if they have a physics project or not. But I so how will this experiment help? It will reduce sky glow by a lot if we, if all of the streets use this full cutoff. Conservation of electricity and even money because the, amount, the number of street lights on the street will reduce as the amount of light reflected in the full cutoff covers more area. So the number of street lights will definitely reduce. And in cities, especially in cities, stargazing, the quality of stargazing improves. So, you will see a picture right here. That is sky glow. That is what I'm talking to you about. So, if we try our best, I know we can't reduce the entire uh, sky glow effect, but if we try our best, the result, it can be, okay, you might not see, but it, you can see a lot of stars here. So that is the result. Now, if I have to give you other solutions, it can be choosing the right time. Uh, it can be for a new, new moon's day. You have to only start using a new moon's day because the full moon's day, you might, uh, you know, if the light from this new moon, the full moon will distract you. And you should also choose what you want to see. If you want to see the meteor showers, only go on the day for the meteor showers. If you want to see the full moon, go to the planetarium, take the help of the telescopes or their binoculars and look at them. And other, uh, 
location. The next op option is location. As I told, high altitude place causes less distortion. So there you can go and the best for city dwellers is go away from the city. Away, run away from the city. Go away from those street lights, from those halls and stand there for half an hour. And I will guarantee that those, that half an hour will get extended to three hours. Other methods. So this can be for millennials like us. We can use uh, our phones, but which we have in our pockets every day. We can install apps and we can see what kind of stuff you want to see. That will give us notifications and all of that. That will help us. Or for uh, Bangalore, people who live in Bangalore, please do visit the planetarium, Jawaharlal Nehru Planetarium. They conduct uh, every second Saturday for high schoolers. They conduct a club. So uh, please do attend. And for anybody else who's interested in anything else, astronomy related, every Saturday 7 p.m. they conduct a workshop. Please do go and attend as it will help you a lot. So what of this project? What did we learn? We learned conducting research and analyzing the data that we got from the research, reasoning and finding solutions, that is asking the proper questions to find the proper solution. Being able to connect anything to geography, out the box thinking, and realizing that we are only a speck in the universe. I have a last question for you all. Are you all ready to taste the sky and feel alive again? Thank you. somehow on the manholes. When there is a problem occurred in the sewage, they have to, uh, to reach the manholes, they have to uh, dig up the road. After the work, they don't make a try to recover uh, recover the good road. and They have to level it. Next is the negligence of the people. A people when uh, pass through the potholes, just scold uh, the government, they scold the officials and many other people who are associated with it. But they don't make a try of even of even making a recognition of the potholes to the officials so that they can take care of it. The last thing is seasonal effect. Uh, air, so sun, sunlight, water and weather like erodes the, erodes, erodes the rock, they also erode the tar. This is how uh, the roads get a crack in the, and they can cause potholes. 
these are the results of these reason, uh, reasons. For we, are, we did survey for uh, knowing the problems faced by the people. In the uh, first one, was, uh, an auto driver said that we, we, the passengers are unhappy by the way they uh, ride their auto. Sometimes passengers hit their heads to the sides of the autos and they get angry, they get dissatisfied. By this, they also pay less. Uh, then, uh, sometimes street vendors, they get into the potholes unknowingly and their products fall down. When the products fall down, they are unclean, they are unsold. Stagnation of water leads to unhygienic conditions. Uh, the, the water splashes on the products of the street vendors near the potholes when uh, vehicles pass through them. This also makes the products dirty. This also spreads insect population and uh, smells like sewage. The next part is damages the vehicles and injures people. Uh, like, it, lead, it leads to accidents also. The, uh, there are lots of damages to the vehicles like suspensions, tires and engines get damaged. And uh, my, there's my own experience. I once had heavy rains, I went, uh, I rode my cycle into the pothole. And I fell down. That was unfortunate. Uh, I got in, I got injured. And, uh, there are many other worsened cases uh, when uh, there are accidents taking place. There are so many other examples. There are 189 death reports uh, in last four years only in Karnataka. Muddy water spoils dress and also erodes the tar. Uh, when, uh, pe when, when the pedestrian will be uh, the water will spoil the pedestrians dust when the vehicles pass through these uh, watery potholes. These also increase the use of water resources used for cleaning and bathing. Higher charges on transportation. When regular roads are not good, we have to take an alternate one. There is no other option. Also, when we have to take an alternate one, it will be more longer than the regular one. Uh, when it is more longer, then uh, we have to, there is more use of uh, petrol and there is more use of time. This also costs more fares. Physical injuries due to rain, heavy rainfall and lack of street lights. Uh, when, uh, when it heavily rains, uh, in the night, uh, we can't differentiate the potholes and the roads. When we slip into it, we are seriously uh, injured. This is how we are. They lead to accidents also. What did we do is we surveyed 30 people. There were ten. We, we met so, so many people who were in, uh, who were also suffered from these potholes. Uh, we surveyed uh, 10 pedestrians, 10 street vendors and 10 uh, auto drivers. We spread awareness among the people to be safe from these potholes and also tell them uh, we should we should uh, tell it to the officials uh, who can uh, repair them. We sent an RTI request to the public information officer. We found this uh, as the uh, very strong medium to recognize the problem of the people to the officials. This uh, this way uh, we also learned how to write an RTI. We filled uh, we filled two uh, potholes on the main road of V Nagan uh, There were few people who helped us in doing this. This was the questionnaire we used for the survey. For the pedestrians, uh, there were four common questions and one question related uh, to the section. Uh, how do potholes affect your routine? What health, what health impacts do you face due to potholes? How potholes affect you during heavy rains? What did you do to rectify this? Were the four common questions and. Uh, do auto drivers ask higher fares? Or was asked to pedestrians? Uh, why and for what do you change? Do charge more? Or was asked to auto drivers? How does it affect your business? Was asked to street vendors. These were the potholes we filled in the Veen Agen Hali main road on 28th June this year. We learned 
learned so many uh, so many things in this process we learned how to write an uh, how to write an rti request when we visited the website to file the rti request they charged us 400 rupees even with the charges 400 rupees we saw some good changes the dcm of karnataka said that 94% of the potholes in karnataka that is 4000 to 9 potholes are uh, filled in uh, the last 3 weeks we learn to use and self maintain the roads we shouldn't put the garbage on the roads which distract us and affect uh, the accidents to occur this this way we should keep our roads clean and safe a uh, road show the sincerity of the government we got to these were the visual uh, these were the visuals of how uh, people uh, respond how the people responded and public workers and uh, the leaders worked this uh, this shows the sincerity of the government small initiatives can make a big change in our locality like when we filled the potholes we got to know there was uh, we got to know how to fill the potholes when few people suggested us uh, of how to fill and they also provided the necessary materials when we when we could do all this many things then why can't the people in our society do much more better things we can expect so many other better things from the people uh, so we so we request us to take uh, initiatives and fill the uh, and make our society tidy and hazard free thank you Three point two million so population of software engineer in world. The Events Data Corp says that there will be a forty five percent increase on uh, so population of software engineers. The qualification is must for all the jobs. For this job also, the qualification is must. That is, uh, degree in computer and bachelor's in computer. Uh, why we choose this topic because my sister in, is in this profession we want to know about the health issues and the works they done so we choose this topic as you can see in the graph 32% as 13 members said that they are working in a uh, irregular routine and 60 68% 28 members said that they are working in normal works Uh, total we are, uh, overall we survived 41 members keeping the uh, 41 interviews we made as a graph you can see in the graph as three uh, health issues that the dark blue refers that the insomnia insomnia is nothing but the sleeplessness and the purple one refers that physical pain physical pain like back pain and wrist pain the last uh, one refers that the stress health issues 
a low back pain low back pain is nothing but while we are sitting in the computer in front of the computer for long hours without any movement we get a uh, back pain in our interviews 50% of them said they have interview they have low back pain anxiety and stress why we are getting anxiety and stress because while we are thinking about our work in uh, in any situation so we will get stress in our interviews 15% of them say they have uh, stress carpal tunnel syndrome carpal tunnel syndrome is nothing but the wrist pain when we we'll work uh, in keyboard we we'll get wrist pain 10% of related to wrist pain heart disease is very rare in software engineers uh, why because when we think more about our work we we'll get stress headache and we we'll get a chance to heart disease insomnia insomnia i said that is uh, really, insomnia is nothing but sleeplessness while we we'll look uh, face towards computer we we'll get a burning sensation and uh, insomnia we conclude that Uh, we have learned about the software engineer health issues and what are the works they are doing for their client and we came to know about the uh, how many people they are following the regular routine and irregular routine we recommend that the software companies to provide a little space to to them when they are free to make exercise and we we'll, we we'll recommend to uh, companies to reduce the working hours and overtime works thank you lot of things to uh, share with all of you but i'll keep it short with one for uh, group your portfolio uh, project was amazing for a variety of reasons <clears throat> one not only did you identify what the problem is you looked at so many aspects of the problem and you spoke to people from different uh, walks of life uh, literally walks of life uh, you also looked at their particular engagement with portals with the vendors you asked a particular question with the auto drivers you asked a particular question so that is a very very sensitive thing to attack about all the fact that you yourself yourself they should say filled up portals is phenomenal absolutely phenomenal right? so uh, i think you have a very reason to be very proud of what you have done all of you really uh, i just happened to be talking to you with that, that particular uh, aspect of your work so i'm very very glad you have all done so well thank you anybody any questions that you may want to ask any of the groups please remember to mention your name your school and which group you would like to thank us for assisting Uh, but i have one doubt for the starlight star gazing team yeah group 2 you said quality of star gazing will improve with differently uh, designed street light but we really have no time to gaze at the star you know what do you want to say about that 
Uh, yes, I agree with that. So, uh, city dwellers don't really have the time. But as I tell, uh, as I told, it's a relaxation outlet. It is really important that you should make time to look at gaze at the stars, as it will help you with a lot of things. You might have homework tension uh, in all your mind, right? So it will help you with that. So you have to make time for it. Yeah, thank you. So my question is for the first team. Uh, I want to ask you if this, uh, who is in charge of the like the BBMP or the best form? John, John, please. The first team. BBMP. But you told when you, when the street light uh, got some problem, you called Bescom and uh, made them get it got it repaired. But yesterday we got that uh, BBMP was the in charge. But we had printed the letter as Bescom. Hi, everyone. This is Bhavshi from Purva. So my question is for the, uh, could it uh, could it uh, software engineering? So I just wanted to ask. So how is it related to geography? Uh, yes, uh, it is related to geography by its latitudinal and longitudinal problem. Hello everyone, my name is Om Mishra. So my, uh, my question is for street light. Don't you think that social evils are one of the cause for the, like the, due to the absence of street light? I'll repeat. Don't you think that social, uh, like the absence of uh, street light is, can cause the social evils? Social evils? It means social evils like chain snatching. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, if in a state there is no street light, then Change of standing will be happening. Thank you. Uh, I'm Apoorva. My question is to the stargazing. So, do you know how much will a equipment, if I want to buy an equipment to watch the stars, how much will it cost? Uh, good question. Thank you. Uh, I had got a gift as a binoculars for my present this uh, this year. So, it cost some uh, 10,000, 15,000 at about. So, you can buy it for a cheaper rate, but the quality will not be good. Hello everyone, my name is Shiva Kumar. I am from Vidyanjali School. So, I want to ask a question for first group. How are accidents caused? How are accidents happening when streets are not there? But lights will be in vehicles now. How are accidents happening? Now, you think in a street there is no, no street light, fully it is dark. And from one side, from the left side a car is coming and from the right side also the car is coming. So the driver, he can see only the light which is coming from the headlight. So he can't see the car or a vehicle which is coming and that time accidents can cause. No, in vehicles, headlights will be. That only. From binoculars, you cut the uh, moons and stars, right? Actually, you can see with the help of binoculars, uh, but it will not be as powerful as the telescope for watching. But binoculars will also help you. As I told, it helped me to see that the series is two stars, so you can see stars with the help of binoculars. Hello, I have a question for the streetlight group also. Um, 
did you think to ask about if there was any difference between men and women to see if there was any difference in people's attitudes towards having street lights? Sorry, I didn't get your question. I'm just thinking about the question of fear, people being scared on the dark streets. Was there any difference between uh, ladies going out into dark streets versus men? Did you notice any difference? Was it difficult uh, for the woman? Was it difficult for the woman or the men when they were going into the dark on the street? So, did you see a difference that women or men who were facing troubles. Women were more, did you hear that women were more afraid or men were more afraid? Did you find out about that? Did you? I think men, because if in a street there is more lack of street lights, then men will be like going to shops, jobs. So if they come late from the job, men uh, will be affected more than women. And sometimes uh, not in a more way, but women will be in the home. Sometimes they go for the shop. Our software team, I remember meeting you in your school. And uh, Arvind, you showed me a video you had made, an interview with uh, a Nigerian software engineer who is living in Bangalore. And the whole context of it was, I was hoping you would show that. Uh, Video in this, I thought we were going to show it, and that's okay. If you don't have. We were having a discussion, and one of his teammates probably doesn't understand English. That's it, so what? It turns out he speaks Tamil, so I do also, I also speak Tamil. We had a good, interesting discussion. This fellow who says he doesn't know English has interviewed somebody who knows nothing but English. Okay? And he's asked him all the questions that he needs to ask, gotten the answers he wants, very precise answers that that fellow. As a friend of your dad, your father, I believe, he gave all the necessary answers. Perfect. No problem. And the reason I'm mentioning this is for some of the children, they have fear of language. Arvind doesn't have that. So, <laughs> he, he doesn't have that. So, the thing is, when you're doing research, if you don't speak the language of the person whom you're interviewing, you can still do it because people are more than happy to meet you uh, halfway at least and try to help you communicate. People do that, right? It also so happens that today is Arvind's birthday. Yes. Happy birthday! Okay, I have a question for you, for the ones who did on the life of people who work with IT companies. Uh, have, have you tried to find out because of the health issues that they have, um, and of course other issues, uh, have they, are they continuing to work in the same field or are they opting to go, are they opting to go on to other fields? I have a very personal reason to ask you this question. Yes, they are still going to their work because they are fascinated on their work. Uh, they have health issues also, they are going for their work. Uh, may I just add, uh, uh, just as a note, um, is uh, when I come, uh, I get a lot of resumes from uh, software engineers who want to take on teaching as a profession, uh, either as science or math teachers, only because, especially from women, because they realize that the working hours are so long, it's a very stressful job, and they prefer coming to teach, uh, not because they want to teach, but because it's a lot more easier, more holidays, more, uh, you know, regular timings, yeah. A lot of software engineers opting out for teaching these days. Any other questions from anybody? So I just wanted to ask a question for uh, safety software engineers. 
So as you said, uh, the health problems due to night working and all. So do you, uh, do you have any suggestions to, uh, to stop uh, health issues? Uh, we gave recommendations. Uh, I don't know what they will do. We gave recommendations. Um, hello everyone, I'm Srihari and I'm from Vijayanthala Academy for Learning. And I want to ask a question to the stargazing group. Uh, so, first thing, I really like the topic and so it was totally different. But I have one doubt. Like, for example, when you reduce the amount of light spread by a street light, the concentration becomes higher. So, the reflection also becomes higher. So, light going to atmosphere increases a lot. And I feel this light is way positive. So, how can we... Is there any other solution? But... Uh, our experiment was actually about that, to reduce the light uh, reaching the atmosphere. So we said we will add a reflector that will just make the light reflect on the road and not reach the atmosphere. So we will add a reflector over the, I mean, we wanted to ask the BBMP people to add the full cutoff where it will cover the entire top part of the street light so none of the light is reaching the atmosphere. Yeah, but the uh, majority of the light is still on the ground. Only a fraction of light will reach the atmosphere. So my question is for potholes. Like as you mentioned the point that the negligence of people. So what can a common man do to avoid the problems? He can do so much. He can even if he goes to the uh, you know the municipality and says this, the, munici the municipality will get scared. Like it might become the problem might become bigger. So they will immediately fix the problem. So that that's the strength of a common man in a democratic government. He can make many changes in uh, the My question is for street light groups. How are street lights related to geography? Because street light uh, is our daily need. And we need uh, street lights always know at the night time. So it is related to geography. Thank you. Uh, I want to have a question. I mean, I just wanted to, I mean, of all the four of you did so well, but just to highlight that whenever we walk on the street, we look at potholes, we just take a roundabout way and then we cross, right? You touched on so many important aspects of losses to vendors, auto drivers, how insect population increases and how it contributes to contributes to diseases and you also said damage to vehicles, death due to hot holes. When roundabout road is used, travel time increases, cost of travel increases, fuel usage increases, oh my god, so many aspects of it. We never would have thought about it. So so nice, so nice, yeah. Hello, my name is Abhishek. I am from Vidyanjali Academy for Learning. My question is for the team via potholes. My question is that how is BWSSB connected to the road making issues? Actually, BWSSB is for water supply. But BDA is for road authority. Um, the, uh, the, that's what we said. The lack of coordination between BWSSB and uh, road contractors causes potholes. Like for example, most of the manholes in uh, our locality is, is in the middle of the road. So when the roads are being laid, they lay it on top of the manhole. So when BWSSB has to reach and fix few problems in the sewage pipe, to reach the manhole, they have to take out the road. Only then they can access the manhole. So that also contributes to us. Uh, I am under orders to, by the boss here, uh, the chairperson of the session, to ask this question for each of the teams uh, and obeying orders, not my fault. 
So the, the suggestion was, I want each team to tell us how you plan to carry this idea forward. First, what do you plan to do anything for the idea while is over? My presentation is over, so I don't need to worry about it. That's one possibility. Or do you say, this is something that has really made me interested in this topic. I want to continue with it. If so, what would you like? So either way, it's it. So I would like to start. Uh, uh, we are the photo group. So when we actually filled the photo on 28th July, uh, 28th June, we actually made an oath that at least every month we will fill two potholes near our home. So, so since June was the previous month, we are going to start from this month and I hope it continues like at least for two years. And, and yes, we'll take a video and also. And we are also, uh, like my mom gave me this idea, we are also planning to create a website in which we can say how a man can call you. Hi, my name is Swati. Uh, when we were discussing about our topic, we came to know one of our partners, sister is software engineer, and we came to know uh, about the profession and the standard uh, that inspired us related on their job. That's why we chose this topic. So, like, um, as uh, we have cho chosen CGI problems and crimes, I first, I would like to go to the school and I, I would like to talk with all the children whether they have proper street light in their street and if they don't have I would like all and I would like to all I would like to help all the members on this problem. Uh, hello, uh, my name is Pranati. We chose the topic stargazing in Sultan Palya. So uh, my ideas are to continue and uh, request the BBMP to actually implement the full cutoff on our street. And uh, we have a trip coming up in our school, for high school. So I will, I will try my best to convince them to take to a very good place where stargazing can be uh, implemented. And I will convince, try my best to convince my school to take for planetarium trips and all that. Thank you everybody. We come to the end of this session. I'd like to... Oh, there is a question there. Yes. So, uh, I, I also wanted to just uh, talk about potholes. Uh, last year we had citizen geography, and we talked about geographies of care. So how can we get care communities to kind of come together to make a better world? And I think that the way you thought about potholes was about caring for other people. And so the geographies of care motivated you to not just individually go out, but you dealt with the state, and you dealt with civil society, and you dealt with you as individuals. And I think triangulating those three things, the state, civil society, and an individual, um, you know, Dr. Roberts and I were hoping that you would all run for office and, um, you know, take over Bangalore. Uh, uh, maybe that could be the last question for the day. Thank you. So my question, my question is for the stargazing team. Um, are you aware of which months in Bangalore are good for star stargazing? Which month? Uh, yes, uh, I would like to tell that winters, or oh, late winters and early summers are the best months to stargaze. Also, I just want to add on, you do know that like factors like uh, dust levels in the city also affect the stargazing a lot, right? Yeah. Because um, as far as I know, like just sharing a little bit of my experience is that the glow from the street lights only affect stargazing when there is too much of dust in the atmosphere and when there is a cloud cover. Because that way then you, you've got like red skies for all over. Yeah. 
you so much. I think we're running out of time. I know there are lots of questions coming up. We could do it. We can continue with the question and answer session over lunch. Thank you so much for this very, very nice presentation. <laughs>
Thank you.